What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out WWE wrestlers whose career was killed in one match. Now, here's the thing sometimes a wrestler could potentially get it, uh, get some backstage heat, whether it's from politicking or whether it's you know a wrestler does something in the ring that maybe Vince doesn't like or maybe the other wrestler in the ring doesn't like and eventually their career can be pretty much killed just within that one situation or instance even though it may have been a mistake like i'm sure you guys have seen people who accidentally um got other people hurt it wasn't intentionally you know that other person may not feel that way and guess what they talk to vince and then vince is like you know what maybe we need to kind of move away from this person they start getting pushed down the car they start getting jobbed out and then ultimately they can end up getting future and endeavor it's the nature of the business not saying that it's correct but it does happen and it's sometimes unfortunate for that wrestler to have to deal with that so we're gonna check out some instances where wrestlers you know career was pretty much put you know down the toilet per se because of one particular match WWE wrestlers that killed their careers because of one match. Mr. Kennedy, I remember Mr. Kennedy, this ruthless aggression wrestler was being fast-tracked yeah. into the main event scene. The former WWE United States Very Champion made his debut him. on SmackDown in 2005 and he had what most men in pro wrestling won, charisma. His mic gimmick was simple, yet the former WWE star stood out from everyone else on the roster. Mm -hmm. WWE gave him an undefeated streak early in his career, but it wasn't before long before he won the US title. It was a short reign, but Mr. Kennedy bounced back by winning the Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania 23. Unfortunately, he lost the briefcase to Edge due to a misdiagnosis of a triceps tear that creative thought would keep him out of action for over five months. But Vince yeah. didn't give up on Mr. Kennedy as he saw him as a future main eventer. The illegitimate son angle was meant to reveal Mr. Kennedy as Vince's bastard son, but that was scrapped due to him receiving a wellness policy suspension. Yeah. But then May 25th, 2009 happened. Mr. Kennedy made a huge return after a dislocated shoulder put him back on the injury list. He was then in a 10-man tag team match and botched a backdrop that saw Orton land on the back mm -hmm. of his neck. The former WWE star revealed that Orton complained to management about his recklessness inside the squared circle. Kennedy was then fired four days later. It's not clear who got the former WWE star fired as there are reports that John Cena also complained to Vince as well. Mr. Kennedy would have been a world champion had it not been for his botch against Orton. Then again, Mr. Kennedy was very injury prone, so the botch against Orton didn't particularly prevent him from becoming WWE Champion. As you can imagine, the former WWE star was bitter after his abrupt firing. Kennedy then had a run in TNA, but was never able to recapture the magic he had in WWE. The former United States Champion will be one of the men who had plenty of potential to become something big, and who knows what could have happened to him had he not killed his career with that botch. Yeah, bro, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy how, you know, politicking and, and one mess up can end your career <laughs> in uh, pro wrestling. It's crazy when you think about it like that because he definitely had the potential to be a, a top star, you know, considering what they planned on doing with him. Yeah, he was supposed to be the next guy up. Hideo Itami. On the opposite end was Hideo Itami, who was yep. nowhere close to reaching the main event. But when the former pro wrestling Noah star finally signed a contract with WWE in 2014, it was exciting to see what the Japanese legend could do under the WWE brand. Mm -hmm. Itami had an okay first year in NXT, but just when it finally seemed that the newcomer was going to dip his toes into the main event scene, a shoulder injury took him out of action for over a year. That was the biggest problem for Atami. Every time he would get some form of momentum, he would be slapped with an injury. Mm -hmm. All the excitement and buzz he had coming into the company was gone by the time he finally made his Raw debut on December 18th, 2017. Now Atami was slowly regaining steam thanks to his feud against Bobby Roode and Alistair Black. That all changed with one GTS. The man who created the legendary move had to go to sleep on Brian Kendrick and broke his nose. Yep. Though it was an accident, that still prompted Vince to ban mm -hmm. him from using the GTS and Atami's experience became a miserable going through the motions run when he was wasted in a division that was treated as an afterthought. It's doubtful that Vince saw Hitami as anything more than a cruiserweight, yep. but that unfortunate injury to Brian Kendrick stripped away the very move that made Atami famous. The former IWGP United States Champion hasn't been shy about expressing his frustrations regarding his failed WWE run. 
Given how much hype he had before coming in and the lackluster fan reception when he left, it's understandable why Kenta resents his time in being in the biggest company in North America. Jackie Gay and here's the thing about that. It, it doesn't make it better that injuries kind of, you know, you know, halted his momentum as well. That that a lot of times that be the biggest killer injuries. And if you mess up or something happens, then they compound out with the injuries. Like, oh, he's injury prone and he botched this or accidentally hurt someone. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and. uh and kind of just, you know, go our separate ways. So injuries do play a big part in, you know, essentially the downfall of someone's career. Ada, the Tough Enough winner is infamous in the wrestling world, but not for a particularly great reason. As entertaining as Tough Enough was, the reality show was an ultimate bust because it only produced one star, The Miz. Now, John Morrison and Maven had notable careers, but they never got out of the mid-card vortex. Mm -hmm. But Jackie Gator was not a good wrestler, and many have seen that match with Trish Stratus and Bradshaw on July 8th, 2002. Now, that match was fine when Bradshaw and Christopher Nowinski were in the ring, but when Gator and Trish were fighting, it turned bowling uh... shoe ugly. The former WWE star had numerous botches, including a delayed sell after Trish hit a bulldog from the oh, second rope. Yeah. This didn't instantly kill Gator's career. WWE officials realized that she wasn't ready to be in the ring and sent what her back that? to OVW. But Jackie was never taken seriously as a top female star. And Jackie Gator was simply treated as eye candy when she yeah. returned to the main roster. That's the most notable right. moment was the Playboy evening gown match against Sable and Tori Wilson. Her performance against Trish put in the box of women who were used to excite the male audience. And granted, that was most of the women during this period because Trish was no stranger to bra and panties matches, but Gator was never treated as a serious contender for the WWE Women's title following that infamous match. Jeez. Christopher Nowinski Christopher Nowinski may have escaped the embarrassment of his infamous Raw match with Jackie Gator, but his 2003 Rumble appearance made him something far worse. The former Tough Enough contestant came in the bout at number three and made a splash until a mistime missile dropkick caused Edge to fall oh. onto Chris's head. Nowinski would continue wrestling for the next couple of months, but the post-concussion symptoms forced him to retire following his final match mm -hmm. with Maven. Nowinski had some potential as he played the brash and arrogant Harvard graduate pretty well. He was a solid wrestler and Nowinski could have gotten better if he wasn't forced to retire. But thankfully, Nowinski is now doing well outside mm -hmm. of the business as he went on to help other athletes who have gone through the same issues he did. Nowinski wrote a book titled The Head Games Football Concussions Crisis in 2006 and received plenty of praise for his study on the long-term effects of head trauma. Nowinski was part of a huge concussion lawsuit filed mm -hmm. against the WWE in 2016, but the case was ultimately dismissed mainly due to lack of evidence. Still, Nowinski helped change necessary policies in the company that prevented further athletes from suffering the same problems he did during his post-concussion day. And to be honest with you, it is a good thing. It's unfortunate that his career got cut short because of that. But, you know, with that came the silver lining of him finding out more about the concussions that happened in wrestling and to make people aware. Like, people sit up here and make it seem like it's not a big deal. It is. Because you never know when it can happen, and too many concussions obviously can cause some issues to the brain. So, you know, it's a blessing and a curse, because unfortunately he had to go through it and, and, and essentially lose his WWE career. But he was able to pretty much put everybody on game and let them kind of know, especially in the wrestling business, hey, concussions, they're real. And when it happens, it shouldn't be... Well, let me say this. I don't think WWE and just wrestling in period didn't know concussions were real, but I think it was just more of this thing of, you know, hey, you get a concussion, it is what it is, you take you some pills, get back out there the next night and, and go perform. That's just how it was. But now they have protocols. Boys ain't going back out there the next night. Hell, they probably wait a couple weeks to bring them back on TV before they do anything again, which is good. You know, you got to protect these people at the end of the day. Daniel Pewter. Now speaking of tough enough again, Daniel Pewter had a blink and you'll miss it run. Another tough enough winner, Pewter got the chance to show what he got against yeah, Kurt Angle on him. the November 4th, 2004 episode of SmackDown. Unfortunately, Pewter decided to go into business for himself so, and put yeah. Kurt Angle into a legit chimera lock. Now, to be fair, Kurt has talked about this and he revealed that he ignored Vince's advice and put Pewter on the spot. 
Apuda didn't have a good start and got massive backstage heat, but that wasn't the match that killed his career. It was the Royal Rumble match. That match is infamous for the shoot of Eddie Guerrero and Hardcore Holly chopping the hell out of the Tough Enough winner. However, this is about where WWE realized that Pewter wasn't ready for primetime television. Officials sent him down to OVW and Pewter was never seen on the main roster ever again. Damn. Vince offered him another contract, but for Deep South Wrestling with less pay and Pewter declined. Making the transition from MMA to pro wrestling is no easy feat. Is However, that? it seemed that Pewter's arrogance was his biggest downfall. He simply wasn't a good wrestler, so his alleged ego wasn't worth dealing with in the long run. Mm. Sim Snooker A Deuce Domino was a little fun act that saw some decent success them. throughout their short run. And these Remember two didn't them, particularly yeah, yeah. have an instant classic to speak over, but they had some good matches, and their 50s greaser persona made them stand out from the roster. Yeah, like, it worked. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I remember them, man, on SmackDown. That's when SmackDown had some different variation of tag teams that you can get invested into, or, you know, at least like their characters. However, this wasn't an act meant to last long. Vince being Vince, he opted to break up the tag team just a year after they made their debut. Domino and Cherry didn't stand a chance as a singles act, no. but Deuce was a second gen star, so he had the best shot at reaching the main event. But then, WrestleMania 25 happened. Now granted, Deuce, who was going by Sim Snooker at this point, didn't have a bright future before this huge botch. Once he failed to get into Legacy, Snooker was barely used on television. Uh -huh. The match that killed his career wasn't his, it was The Undertaker vs Shawn Michaels. The spot in question was The Undertaker diving over the ropes with Shawn pulling a cameraman to take the dive instead. Snooker was a cameraman and his job uh -huh. was simple, catch The Undertaker. He didn't, and though Taker himself has stated that the yeah. botch adds more drama to their WrestleMania classic, it does. that didn't help Snooker as he was released a short time later. Right, I didn't know that was he was the cameraman. I never knew that. That makes sense. Yeah. Even though, like I said, the botch definitely adds to the classicness of that match, like The Undertaker said. But Vince, I'm sure, hey, bro, I almost lost my, my guy. So, yeah, we're going to have to let you go. That's crazy. Never knew that. A Bret Hart is the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. The Hall of Famer is celebrated by wrestlers and fans alike for his incredible WWE run, but for anyone who knows their WWE history, the Montreal Screwjob changed absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. Bret Hart was no longer a WWE guy, he became a WCW guy in 1997, but his time in the company is a very mixed bag. Some praise the short stint, others say that his tenure was lackluster. Either way, Bret Hart's career ended because of one man. Bill yep. Goldberg. <laughs> well, sort of. Given all the interviews with Bret Hart, it's easy to assume that Goldberg was a man who officially ended his career. That was due to a stiff kick from Goldberg during the match at Starcade in 1999. While the former WCW World Heavyweight Champion is partially responsible for the end of Bret Hart's career, the mounting injuries that Hart sustained throughout the remainder of his time in WCW forced the hitman to hang up his boots once and for all. But let's get one thing straight. Goldberg was the defining factor for why Hart had to retire a short time later, mm -hmm. though it's not completely his fault. The former NFL defense tackle had little experience in wrestling, so Goldberg learned most of his skills when he stepped into the WCW ring. And that's a big reason why WCW wisely kept Goldberg in short matches yeah. for a lengthy period. Nevertheless, there's no telling how far Bret's career would have gone if Goldberg hadn't kicked him into Kingdom Come. But still, Bret Hart accomplished so much in his Hall of Fame career. Davey Boy Smith. Not kicked him in the kingdom come. That's cold. Smith. The former Intercontinental Champion had a legendary run in the 80s, but in the 90s, the Montreal Screwjob saw him leave the WWE. Like Bret Hart, Davey Boy Smith started over in WCW, but his stint didn't last as long as Bret yeah. due to the serious back injury he suffered at the Fall Brawl pay per view in 1998. Smith took a bad bump onto a trap door, which resulted him in staying in hospital Ooh. for six months. Sadly, the former IC champion spiraled after that major injury as he succumbed to prescription painkillers. Yeah, and, and that was the thing. Boys would just get hooked on painkillers to deal with the pain because they're trying to go out there and make their money. Not trying to have surgery because having surgery means you're going to have to be gone for a majority of the year. It ain't like what it used to be. Because now someone can get injured, you have that guaranteed contract, you come back, make up the time, cool. Back then, it wasn't like that. Thankfully, Smith would recover from his substance abuse and even made a WWE comeback in 1999. However, the back injury ruined his career as David Boy Smith wasn't the same man who battled Bret Hart at SummerSlam 92. Mm -hmm. Though he was booked in several high-profile matches, it exposed how limited he became between the ropes. Yeah. The Hall of Famers return didn't last long and unfortunately, Smith would pass away two years after his final WWE match. Draws. Adraz, aka Pute, didn't have much of a career in WWE. His most memorable moment was a critically blasted segment where Hawk climbed the Titan Tron in an attempt to end his life. Once that angle was dropped due to the heavy backlash, he competed here and there in the tag Crazy team division angle. with Prince Albert. 
However, one Some match would put an end to his line. career permanently, and it happened during a SmackDown taping on October 5th, 1999. Puke was facing former IC champion D'Lo Brown, and all was going well until D'Lo hit a running powerbomb. Mm -hmm. D'Lo slipped on a drink that was thrown into the ring, resulting him in accidentally dropping Puke on his head, breaking yeah. two bones in his neck. Draws took responsibility for the accident as he stated that he didn't leap properly and wearing a loose shirt really didn't help. Though he underwent hours of surgery immediately, he was not successful. Draws was paralyzed yeah. and needed constant care until he passed away in 2023. In Austin Aries, one. And we've heard about that, you know, situation. And it's very unfortunate. And, you know, it's 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 never something you want to see. But this is why we say you know, respect to these women and men that go into that ring because you just never know. It could be their last match. We've seen it with Big E. We don't know if that was going to be his last match. That may have been his last match, you know, with uh, Ridge Holland a few years back. We don't know. And obviously it wasn't on purpose, but it's the harsh reality of being a wrestler. Think straight, Austin Aries killed Austin Aries. Yeah. After years of working his ass off on the independent scene and TNA, Aries finally got the opportunity to work in the biggest promotion in America. For the most part, Aries was treated well even when he was forced to sit out due to an injury. That was a blessing in disguise as it allowed the former TNA World Heavyweight Champion to display his charisma and personality in the commentary booth. That in turn saw Aries and Neville fight for the Cruiserweight Championship at WrestleMania 33. Following his second loss to Neville at Extreme Rules, he was released from WWE. It wasn't a match that ruined his stint with the company, it all comes back to the former star's behavior backstage. Mm -hmm. Hell, even Aries has admitted to being a pain in the ass behind the scenes. But that brings us to the match that actually killed his career. Austin Aries vs Johnny Impact at Bound for Glory Despite his falling out in WWE, Aries came back to TNA and regained success. His return in 2018 was going well until he feuded with Johnny Impact. The two wrestlers blurred the lines in their build and Aries taking plenty of shots at Johnny's wife Taya Valkyrie. Now, that part was reportedly a shoot, but what Aries did after his match with Impact was downright strange. Think, Johnny I beat Aries clean clip, yeah. in the middle of the ring at Bound for Glory, but instead of selling the loss, Aries immediately got up, yelled at the commentators, and flipped off the crowd. Mm -hmm. Everybody was confused. He and Johnny had a great match, but the only thing that the people could talk about was the controversial moment afterwards. Aries has maintained that that was not a shoot and it was a planned moment. Aries told Steve Ball of Wrestling News, So my only regret for that whole situation was passing on the contract offer that was put on the table after that. We, I never talked about some personal things that I was going through at the time and I just decided that was in my best interest not to re-sign there. In retrospect, in hindsight, however many years later, I would have made that decision differently. That definitely created the perception that, you know, I don't come back. There is no rematch, there's no payoff to this. It would seem like I went into business for myself. I was really looking back, I could kick myself because it wasn't for the actual Bound for Glory moment, it, it was for not following through with what was planned. It's been six years and Aries has been seen in TNA since. He's wrestled in MLW, NWA and the failed Control Your Narrative promotion. Aries ruined his career following that one moment. And it's a damn shame as he's an extremely talented wrestler. Yeah, you know selling after you just lost a match, a good match, flipping off the crowd like you just don't give a fuck. Like, that doesn't come off good on screen. Like, that's like Cody beating Roman at this year's WrestleMania, and then Roman just gets right back up, flips off the crowd, and walks off. And you'll be like, what? You got to sell that. You know, sell that moment, you know? He could have been a top star in WWE, AEW, or even a place like New Japan. But sadly, that infamous walkout was the final straw that broke the camel's back. But they have it for yeah, these companies ain't trying to hire somebody that's just gonna fucking no sell uh, a match and fuck up a moment. Once I seen that clip, I was like, damn, bro, he just didn't give a fuck. It, it looked the body language and everything looked like he didn't give a fuck. So it's very unfortunate, man. And this is one of those things where wrestling, you know, it's it's a revolving door. Somebody gets into the business, they may not last long. Or sometimes, you know, there may be a situation where someone does get into the business and they do last a while. They do build a uh, a great career, a great resume of, of different matches and different promos, and it may work out for them. And sometimes it doesn't, man. So it's just one of those type of things where, you know, once again, respect the, the ladies and the men that get into this business and, and they, you know, give their all to it um, because it's not guaranteed that they'll be a, be the same afterwards you know it's, it's a very dangerous sport so comment down below let me know some other wrestling videos y'all want me to check out appreciate all love support y'all showing on channel bro too 50k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace